Okay, welcome everybody to today's class. I hope you can see the whole board there. We're looking again at advanced phrasal verbs and idioms. This is, uh, I take this vocabulary from a book which you can find online. Um, you can find it on Amazon, Advanced Phrasal Verbs and Idioms. It's by Oxford University Press and it's a good book for if you like, if you like learning about idioms and phrasal verbs. So I do uh, recommend that book, but I also recommend my own book um, for phrasal verbs only. This is my own book, Visual Phrasal Verbs, and you can find it on my website, which is skypelessons.com. Like this, skype-lessons.com. Okay. Um, and you can find a PDF on my website. It has hyperlinks. It has all the original images. It is exactly the same as this book, but it's a PDF version with hyperlinks, so you can go quickly to the answers. Um, but if you prefer a physical copy, you can find this on Amazon. Just type in visual phrasal verbs and you'll see it. It's by me. It's by Dave Nichols. And you can get lots of pictures in there and lots of exercises for all of these phrasal verbs. All the phrasal verbs that we're doing today are in that book. Now, uh, these come from another book and we start off with to be sure of yourself. Now, I wanted to make this clear that the expression to be sure of yourself sounds like you are overconfident. It sounds like you are too sure of yourself, maybe even a little bit arrogant. So it's not a very positive expression if you say he's very sure of himself. It might be in some situations, you might be using it positively, but most of the time this is really quite negative to be sure of yourself. Um, so that's why I've put this little negative sign here. So overconfident, you might say. To stop at nothing. If somebody will stop at nothing to achieve a certain goal, that means that um, they, they really make an effort. They're so determined to achieve that goal, to reach that goal, that they will stop at nothing. Nothing will make them give up. Nothing will make them stop. So to stop at nothing is, the, is something that really determined people do. It's a good word, determined, meaning somebody who doesn't give up. Somebody who is determined is somebody who never gives up. And so if you, oh, I've spelt that wrong. If you stop at nothing to do something, um, that means you're really trying hard to do it, that nothing will get in your way, that you're focused on that goal and you will stop at nothing to achieve that goal. I think it's similar to two expressions that we've already looked at. We looked at to go out of your way to do something. That means that you really make an effort to do something and to go to great lengths to do something. That also means you really make an effort to do something. They're not exactly the same as to stop at nothing, but there's, I like to remember vocabulary in big webs. I think that it's best to revise old vocabulary when you look at new expressions. And the only subtle difference is that this means that you are really determined and this means that you make a great effort but they are similar. Okay, to walk all over somebody means to treat that person really badly, and usually it means to boss that person around in some kind of way. So there's two good phrasal verbs here, push somebody around, boss somebody around. That would mean to give them instructions and, and tell them what to do all the time, and they have to do it. So if somebody walks all over you, then usually they're bossing you around, they're pushing you around. Maybe they're bullying you. Maybe they're picking on you. So this is an excellent phrasal verb, which means bully somebody. So when somebody walks all over you, they bully you, they pick on you, they push you around, they boss you around. That's what they're doing when they walk all over you. Again, it's a very negative expression. Whereas to stop at nothing is usually positive because you're determined to reach that goal. Um, it might be negative though, but usually it's positive. Okay, to stick up for somebody or stand up for somebody. This means that you support somebody and defend them when somebody else is attacking them. Maybe physically, maybe mentally, maybe in an argument. 
Um, and if you stand up for them, you support them, you defend them. So it means that somebody is picking on them and you don't think that's right. And so you try to defend them, you try to support them, you stand up for them and say, no, they're not such a bad person. And no, I'm not going to allow you to bully this person, to push them around, to pick on them. So you stand up for them. But you can also stand up for yourself. And that means to defend yourself. Um, if somebody is always getting bullied at school, you might say, stand up for yourself. And it means don't let people push you around. Say no and explain that uh, you, you're not going to let people push you around anymore. You're going to stand up for yourself. You're going to stick up for yourself. So you can stand up for yourself or you can stand up for others. And please remember as well, while we're doing this phrasal verb, stand up to someone. Because to stand up to somebody is... Um, the same but different. Um, stand up for somebody means defend them. Stand up to somebody means that somebody is attacking you and you stand up to them. You defend yourself by standing up to them. So stand up to somebody is to the person you are against. Stand up for somebody is defend the person you are with. Okay, I hope that's clear. They are different. to stand. So we stand up for friends but we stand up to bullies, enemies, bad people. Stand up for good people, stand up to bad people. That's basically it in a nutshell. Okay, if you don't lift your finger to do something, then you're a very lazy person. So this is really the negative. It means you don't do a stroke of work. If you remember from the previous episode, we had a stroke of work. He doesn't do a stroke of work. He's really lazy. He doesn't lift a finger to help anybody. He's really lazy. So they are the same. They're synonymous. Um, and I think it's a very clear visual metaphorical description. Yeah, he won't even lift his little finger to help somebody. OK, if you take it for granted that something is true, it just means you assume that it is true. And if you take if you take something for granted, it's it means you accept that this must be the case. OK, and this is because of this word granted. If you take it for granted, you take it as definitely the case, definitely fact. Yeah, what is the case? Now, if you take somebody for granted, it means that you expect them to act in a certain way. And quite often, this is negative. If you take, uh, if you take your wife for granted, perhaps you just assume that she'll always be really good to you. She'll always um, tidy up the whole house. She'll always do all the washing up and all the dishes. And then she goes out and earns a wage as well. And you just take it for granted that she'll carry on doing that and that she'll never expect you to help. But in the end, perhaps she um, walks out on you. She leaves you.